You're, you're, you're listening to the Worldwide Sports Radio Network. You, you, you know what you are? You're a popcorn salesman. Worldwide Sports Radio presents the, 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 the home stretch. All right, let's hit the field with, with, with Tyler and friends. Hello! Welcome to the home stretch. I am your host, Tyler Harrison, along with my very upset, very disgruntled producer slash co-host slash it'll be okay. It'll be okay. It'll be okay. Hope so. Don't, no, no, no. We're, we're, you got people right now going, what the hell is they talking about? But anyway, we'll talk to it in about five seconds. Um... Oh, that's my voice. I hear myself. Yeah, I was checking if the sound was working. Oh, good. Well, I'm glad I can hear myself. So, anyway, um, we are back for another edition of the Home Stretch, and we are back till 10 o'clock. I'm not doing this one-hour shtick anymore. It's quite upsetting to me. Um, so, yeah, I just, uh, yeah, we're going to do this, and we're going to do it the right way, and uh, we're going to leave no stone unturned. Uh, there's a lot to get to because I couldn't talk about the Astros thing until today, really, because of the last couple of days being hectic here at the network. But um, as we all know, there was some breaking news that just broke. Jason Garrett will be the New York Giants offensive coordinator. And I know a lot of people have immediate resentment towards that and go, no, no, why? I think it's brilliant. I think it's actually brilliant i do love this brilliant wow (laughs) brilliant the new york giants just literally pulled the wool over everyone's eyes and there should be one pissed off man right now jerry jones is fuming right now because guess who next year is gonna have to go against ron rivera doug peterson and now jason garrett and joe judge the Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> and Joe Judge. Like, we already know what he is. <laughs> well, no, no, but I'm saying we'll talk about that in a second, too. But first, by the way, can you look up some sort of, like, breaking news type of sound? I'll give it a shot, but it's going to be hard to do with the other music playing. We'll see. Well, no, that that's fine. So um, we're going to go around the world of sports as my freaking voice just cracked. Did you hear that? The frog has returned. No, it's been fine all day. I've been yelling all day long. Oh. oh, my God. I don't know. All right, let's try this again, okay? So before we do anything else, we're going to go around the world in sports because I don't want to sound like I've got a freaking lake in my throat. Ready, set, go. We're going to start with college basketball. Number 15, Michigan State is up 41-33 over Wisconsin on FS1. The the second half just started as uh, Tom Izzo's group looks to put a clamp on things. They've been they've been a little sloppy lately. Yeah, they so, have. So they're gonna they're gonna put things together. Uh, speaking of sloppy, second half just started in this one too. Number 13, Dayton is trailing to St. Louis, 41 to 36. I'm sure Dayton will turn it around. They've are a better second half team than they are first half team anyway, so that's fun. In about St. Louis is a good team though. They're fourteen no, and three. <laughs> yeah, no, they are pretty good. Uh, another one of those bubble teams that you don't want to play probably. Uh, later on today, the last game of the college basketball games of relevance. If you want to watch Alabama State take on Alabama State Junior, then you, you can go right ahead. Um, at nine o'clock, nineteen Michigan takes on Iowa. I'm calling an upset here. I'm Ooh. going to pick Iowa. I am. I think Michigan's do, huh? Yeah, they, they're they just not a good basketball team. They're, well, they're better than anyone expected it to be this year because they lost a lot of their players from last year, and also they just got a new coach. So. Sure, but they're not. you can tell they're just not chilled yet. But, uh, yeah, I'll pick Iowa in this one. I, and plus, Iowa's always the team that can't score, but they'll do everything else. And those teams typically win home games. So I'll take I'll take. Well, they Iowa. used to have some good offensive teams. With a lot of good big men, more of an inside game offensive team. But well, they used right. to have teams that were top 
Bring back the mid-range jump shot. Did you see the Did you see the graph of shots in the NBA? No. Okay, I'm not kidding. They're the two. They're the. It's the top 200 spots on the floor. The there's about maybe 50 to 100 right by the net, and then the rest are all behind the three point mark. Well, it's the way the league is now. Yeah, but it sucks. Bring back the mid-range jump shot. Thank you. You probably wouldn't see that kind of thing for college basketball just because there's not enough good three-point shooters, and there's also just more teams. So there's sure. less likelihood. Sure, sure. But we go now to the association. That's the NBA for those of you at home. The Indiana Pacers, I'm telling you, watch this team in the playoffs when Oladipo is healthy. They're going to really be a problem. They're up 70-67 right now with the Minnesota Timberwolves. Just trade Carl Anthony Towns to the Golden State. Get it over with. Take D'Angelo Russell. State. Take D'Angelo Russell in the draft picks. Give up Carl Anthony Towns and stop the nonsense. Just stop. Because if you don't trade Carl Anthony Towns, they're going to sign somebody. Like, oh, I don't know, Giannis Antetokounmpo? Trade him now before Giannis the rest. is not leaving. Yeah, that's what everyone says. Right now. No, everyone says Giannis is going to go to the Knicks. Which we know that's that won't not, happen. That's not, that's not happening. No, we, we know that'll get screwed up somehow. Yeah. Hey, uh, if you get if you sign my agent to be your head coach, I'll do it. No. Oh. All right. All right, Golden State. If, if here you, I am. If All you right. could recruit the richest man in Greece to come buy the team, well, <laughs> those are shots. Right. Right, right, right. Because we know it ain't happening with James Dolan. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, TJ Warren actually leads the Pacers with 14. And, uh, again, Victor Oladipo's return is kind of close. I think it's the end of January. They're expecting he'll be back on the floor. Carl Anthony Towns has 13. Jared Culver, who I like to the draft, has 12. Andrew Wiggins also has 12. So kind of a, not a renaissance, but he's finally putting it all together. To me. But uh, the Chicago Bulls are actually up on the Philadelphia 76ers at halftime, 47-46. The lead scorer for the Bulls, our boy Lou Markinen. Uh, Zach Levine has 11 for the Sixers. Ben Simmons has 12, as he has attempted zero three-point shots. And uh, that's really it. No, no he one can else only make three-pointers against the Knicks. Probably. And now apparently Dwight Howard can, too. Yeah, well. <laughs> that's how sad the Knicks are. <laughs> well, that's not saying much. Uh, so in a Bradley Beal. Oh, no, Bradley Beal is playing. I apologize. The Toronto Raptors are up on the Washington Wizards, 65-51 at halftime. Um, I have to make sure I say it. Isaac Bonga. He was a Laker last year. Everybody calm down for this guy. Okay. He's got 10 points. Uh, Troy Brown Jr. has 9. The Toronto Raptors, the leading scorer is Orji Anabai. That, that guy, 16 points. And uh, the reason I said that guy was because I resent him for being a very big reason as to why Golden State lost. And Norman Powell also has 16 so, yeah, that's that's that. Uh, the Miami Heat are up on the Oklahoma Thunder 28-21 as uh, they are a very scrappy team this year. And I think you can really attest Chris Paul to being the leader, obviously, right? But I think that just goes to show you why James Harden won't win anything. Harden couldn't see that Chris Paul should have led the team. And that team had more talent than Oklahoma City. Just imagine if Harden would have fell back just a little bit. Amazing. Um, the lead scorer for the Heat is Bam Adebayo. Adebayo. There yeah. it is. There you go. And for the, the Oklahoma State Thunder, Niren's Newell leads the way with seven. <laughs> he still exists. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, the Cleveland Cavaliers are trailing 16-17 to 17 over the Memphis Grizzlies as John Morant has pretty much solidified he's rookie of the year unless he just doesn't want to play the rest of the year. Uh, in about five minutes, you will see the Atlanta Hawks Take on the San Antonio Spurs. And at 9.30, Luka Doncic takes on Damian Lillard in a battle of underrated stars in the league. That, that's really all I can say about yeah. that, right? Um, the American Express Tour in California for golf. Hey, I hate talking about it too, but it is what it is. Ricky Fowler and Scott Scheffler. Scott Scheffler are tied at minus 15. Andrew Landry is at third with minus 14. They all shot minus eight today. That number four, Tony Finau, Finu, Finhau, Finu. I'm going to call you Mr. Finu. 
Uh, he shot a minus 10 today. He's now at minus 13 for the tournament. And at 5, Bud Cowley, he shot also a minus 8 today. He's number 5 with minus 12. Now we obviously go to the best sport playing today. Hockey. The gridiron of ice is what I call it. Uh, a couple of scoreless like games. Thank you. Uh, the Tampa Bay Lightning and Winnipeg Jets just dropped the puck. It's tied at zero. And also at the end of the first period, Sidney Crosby and the Penguins are tied at zero with the Detroit Red Wings. And at, also at the end of the first period, the Carolina Hurricanes and the Anaheim Ducks are tied at one. Eric Gud Branson has scored for the Ducks. And my boy Sebastian Ajo has scored for the Hurricanes. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is Around the World of Sports. Brought to you by... The Cafe, 1815 Mill Parkway, 1815, oh my god, that's not the address, is it? 150 Motor Parkway, Hop Hog, New York. I just got work in this place, very confused. 1815 is centering time. Oh boy, oh, that's not good. All right. People were, hung- eh. People were hungry, and we're about to go to Centery Chanda. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Centery Chanda, yeah. Uh, uh, well, I'll be getting yelled at for that one. But yeah, 150 Motor Parkway, Hop Hog, New York. Yeah, that's <laughs> it's screwed up. <sighs> Damn, that should be a blooper. If we had a blooper reel, I would definitely submit this to be first. That was bad. That was definitely bad. But uh, we start with the breaking news. Nah, I couldn't find it. Oh, you bastard. Oh, damn it. Okay. Well, the breaking news of the day, it was announced as this show was actually being cleared to, and I didn't even talk about Joe Judge being hired, so I would. Uh, we're going to do this now, right? Uh, Jason Garrett, former defense uh, um, offensive coordinator and then eventual head coach of the Dallas Cowboys for the past decade, um, is now the New York Giants offensive coordinator, to which my, many Giant fans, including the one next to me, will respond with, <sighs> really? <laughs> and I and I expect that to be your answer. But I have great news for you. This coaching staff is shaping up very nicely. I like it. I like it a lot. I actually they they've retained the defensive coordinator, correct? I hope not. So I think Joe Judge wanted him back. Oh god. But can you do me a favor and look up who the defensive coordinator might be? I'm pretty sure Joe Judge wanted him back. I don't know if they actually did bring him back, but they definitely were thinking about it. But, um, so yeah, uh, Jason Garrett is the offensive coordinator. You know why that's great for the New York Giants? Guess what Jason Garrett loved to do? Run the football. Control the clock. Not make unsophisticated throws. Guess what the Giants have? An unproven Shaky young quarterback in Daniel Jones, who is much better when the ball is primarily in the hands of the best running back in football and the most electrifying offensive player in the league. Yeah, that Betcher was fired. The Giants' new defensive coordinator is Patrick Graham, who was a, a member of the Dolphins' defensive staff last year. Which is also good. Uh, that's that, uh, that's what he, fine. What his specialty yeah, I was. think he was the looks cornerbacks like, looks coach. Like it, looks like it's a secondary coach. Yes. So, yes, I, I I do remember reading that part. Um, now, here's the reason why I love the way this coaching staff is going, right? So, who is the head coach in Miami? Flores. Who the hell knows where Joe Judge and Brian Flores work together? You're not going to answer? Patriots. So guess what Brian Flores and Joe Judge share? Work ethic. Detail. Everybody do your job. Oh, no, he was the defensive coordinator. Oh, wow. He was even higher up than I thought. I thought it, you're right. I thought he was a DB coach. No, he was the defensive coordinator. That's a good thing. By the way, why the Miami Dolphins overachieve this year? Ryan Fitzpatrick got a couple good games, and Devontae Parker went off. And their defense kept them close. And their defense played well in the second half of the season. Sure. And that team has less talent on it. Well, 
I shouldn't say that. But the Dolphins and Giants have very similar skill sets. And if they bring back guys like Marcus Golden, they let the DBs develop like DeAndre Baker, Sam Beal, uh, who's the other young one, Julian Love. They let these guys kind of come into their own. They keep Bethea. They let Michael Thomas stay around to coach and be the mentor in the backfield. This team and you draft Chase Young. <laughs> if he falls there, which I don't think will happen now. There's going to be they're, – they're not – that draft order is not staying that way. Right. The Bengals but, are going to trade back. Yes, there's right, but here's going the, to be a ton of things. Right, but one of the trades will be for Chase Young if they're going to make trades, as I would imagine. The Raiders are not trading up for Chase Young. The Raiders? Who said the Raiders? They're the only one. The, the Raiders, Dolphins, and I'm trying to think of who else has two draft picks in the first round. There's somebody Jacksonville. else. Jacksonville. Jacksonville. Jacksonville might do it. But other than that, I don't think anyone's trading up for Chase Young. But here's my thing, though. Again, you're looking at – the Bengals, yeah, they're going to take their quarterback. The The Redskins... No, they're not. Yeah, they I really don't think they're going to take Joe Burrow. All right, what, they'll, they'll take a different quarterback then. They're going to trade back and take their quarterback. You really think so? I think they're guys All right, too. so that even... I think they're guys Okay, that, that hurts your case even more. Then who says a team's not trying to trade up for the number one pick to t- take Chase Young? <laughs> they might, but... Right, but I also think the team that's going to trade up would trade up with the Bengals in fear of them taking Joe Burrow, not Tua. I didn't say Tua. I never said Tua. No, I'm saying I think the Bengals will take Young. Tua. No, I know. The Bengals, I think, are going to trade back with the team. Oh. Because they want Tua, not Burrow. All right. That's definitely possible. The problem is there's also too many, too much time slots where, or slots before that where. The Giants team, are what, fourth? Fourth. But there's too many. There's, there's not that many teams, B. They're going to drop in front of them. Right. But how, how far back would the Bengals go? Because the Bengals are probably fearful that the Dolphins could still steal Burrow, and if they, if you, if your theory is right, and they do want Tua, then the Dolphins are obviously looming for that too. So, I don't know, unless the Giants or the team oh, that trades up, God it's damn. going to be hard for. I, I don't. Are I don't, you serious? I don't think Detroit would trade up, and I don't think obviously, like you're saying, the teams with the first round picks would. Trade is this up. still working? Is what still working? The stream? Is it? Oh, no. I'll check that out. <laughs> As my educated friend checks out the equipment. Um, sorry, the internet just went out, so that's why I wanted to ask. Anyway, this is why I like the Joe Judge hiring, right? And the Jason Garrett and the defensive coordinator. Joe Judge comes from the Bill Belichick tree. So it's all right. We're good. I hear my voice. That's good. As long as I hear myself talk, that's all I really care about. I'm just kidding. Sort sort of. Like, I'm kidding. That's why I'm talking right now. But I'm not kidding. Like, I don't. I do get enjoyment out of hearing my own voice. The Joe Judge coming to the Giants solves the Six or seven years of chaos and kind of stops it on the dime. Because what is Bill Belichick? He is a a disciplinarian who is not going to take nonsense. I know I just stuttered. I hope everybody else laughed too. A disciplinarian who is not going to have any nonsense on this football team. He is going to run the ship his way. You either fall in line with his way or you're gone. That's why the Giants let go of guys like Odell Beckham Jr. Don't get me started on what happened in you know New Orleans. It's fine. I really don't want to hear talk about it. Guys like Landon Collins, who were overly vocal, whether it was for the good or bad of the team. And Landon Collins is a high-character guy, too. So I guarantee you Joe Judge regrets them not signing him. And he's a high-educated guy who gives detail into what he is doing. And he's also a guy that players enjoy playing for. Matthew Slater, who is a perennial pro bowler because of this guy, or in help to this guy, raves about him. I just read the review that he gave. No matter what happens to him, 
Matthew Slater is a fan of him. Now, there's a lot of people going, oh, well, what do you know? Belichick is the Patriots. Belichick. And you're right. Bill Belichick is the Patriots. We've seen a lot of guys leave New England and fail, whether it be coaches or players. Josh McDaniels is a prime example of that. He is the smartest guy in the room. Couldn't be a head coach. Couldn't be. Failed. Went back to New England. But, and I kept telling people this, you know why he's not taking a head coaching job anywhere else? Because he's got his next job already lined up. The New England Patriots. When Belichick steps away from coaching, he will stay on as the GM. Josh McDaniels will be his head coach. That's what's going to happen. Point blank, period. No discussion. And then, if you really want to get into specifics, Brian Flores and Joe Judge had a lot of common. Oh, by the way, these unnamed wide receivers that the Patriots are, you know, throwing around, you know why they got better? Joe Judge. I'm not... In a year where they weren't great, though, so... Sure, sure, but they improved over the course of the season. It's just that. Well, sure. But again, you don't have Antonio Brown. You don't have Josh Gordon. In Nikhil, Harry, Nikhil Harry improved the most. Yeah, but Nikhil Harry went from a, you've got raw talent to, okay, you're a two. All right, but they never thought of having Antonio Brown anyway. So I, yes, they did. Stop. When they signed last Antonio year, Brown. Last year? This last is the same year? receiving core, with the exception of, of mm-hmm. Harry. So... So you're talking about the Super Bowl win, right? Yeah. Okay. It's the same receiving core. They did, they knew Julian, they didn't out, have... Julian Edelman wasn't the MVP of the Super Bowl. Yeah, he was. Okay. So what's the difference between last year and this year? Well, when they signed Antonio Brown, their plan was to have Antonio Brown the full season, right? Right, but okay. at the same time, you're not going into OTAs and training camp and stuff sure, like that you're, with the uh, mindset look, of we're right. going to go get Antonio Brown. So you got you're, no. You're their now mindset two. was you're now a three. No, no, their mindset was get Odell Beckham Jr. from the Giants, and the Giants said absolutely not. No chance, no way. Right, but I'm saying even if that didn't happen, it's not like you're lo- – it's not like Antonio Brown played for the Patriots for four years and they just lost him. And sure, no, I, I get that, what you're I'd saying. I understand. He played for a game. Josh Gordon played last year for, what, six games? So that's not really as big of a deal, and they won a Super Bowl without him. So they were used to the roles without him because they knew how to get used to it beforehand. And Nikhil Harry is a rookie, so he was one of the guys that couldn't get used to it. So I think that's, again, really kind of a bad logic to use right there. And, again, it's the same receiving core, pretty much the same alignment, same strengths, whatever, and they still regressed. Listen, that's fine. I'm just saying that Joe Judge helped these kids last year, whether we want to. Uh, I'm trying to think of who the other – Gunner uh, – Olszewski, but he wasn't really a receiver. He was a returner. No, he's not. But, again, special teams, doing your job. Patriots special team units are mostly on point. No, that's, even that's this, right. Even uh, this year, with Kukowski breaking his hip and a rookie punter and really just Matt Slater and everything else, I think they – No, I don't hate the hire draft. because he's a special teams coach. I never said that. It was more of – He's uh, very far down the Belichick coaching tree. He's kind of. But that's where you're wrong. He's not far down the Belichick coaching tree. Right, but he was only he was only the main the main special teams coach. I think the last two years though. So he was only an assistant. I think before that. So you're you're sure. you're taking a really even deeper chance. You're not. No, you're not. Not great as a receiver. You're not coach. taking it as that big of a chance. Because even in Alabama, he was a huge part of what Alabama was doing. That's why Belichick brought him to New England, because he respects Nick Saban. Nick Saban and Bill Belichick are putting high praise on this guy. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. That's fine. But I think it's a brilliant hire. I think it's phenomenal. Because now when you look at what Joe Judge knows, defense, I'm sorry, offense and special teams, and you bring in a guy like Jason Garrett, who is... What's a good word? He knows what he knows, and he doesn't know what he doesn't know. He knows what he knows. Yeah, he knows how to clap and run the ball. (laughs) Right, but what do the Giants need? They don't need that. They don't need a play caller. They need 
Isn't that what an offensive coordinator is? No, that's what Joe judges. Joe, Joe Judge. Judge is not calling plays. He's Hear me out. Hear me out for a second, okay? Joe Judge is going to have – Joe Judge is the guy, okay? Joe Judge is telling Jason Garrett, this is our game plan, and this is the play call you're going to be calling. Jason Garrett is not – he did this in Dallas with Parcells. He's not going to do anything. He's not going to get out of character. Yeah, there's a difference between Bill Parcells and Joe Judge. Yes, I get that. You're taking this too literally. Jason Garrett knows his place. He's not going to get out of line. He's not going to be, oh, I don't think we should call that. Let's call this instead. And you have to look at the personnel the Giants have. Wide receivers. Sterling Shepard. I told you last year I like Darius Slayton. You've got these two guys on the outside. Golden Tate's the slot. And Evan Ingram is a top five tight end talent in football. I wouldn't go that far. but Talent? He's absolutely a top five talent. Outside of the top three, Kittle, he Cooper, has, and... He, he can't block and he has drop problems. That's talent. I don't know. <laughs> Nobody blocks anymore. It's tight end. Nobody blocks. It's a, it's a thing of the past. That's why Gronk was the best tight end in football. Because he was a sixth lineman. No tight end has learned that anymore. How many, when you watch college football, TJ Hawkinson got as much praise as Hawkinson got because he was the last tight end to want to block. No tight ends. Right, but no they're more. still they're still capable of it. I think that's also just a scheme thing too. Well, Evan Ingram's Offensive capable corner. of it. He's a no. He really he's a isn't. breathing he's human being. Really he can figure going. it out. No, that was actually a big weakness of his. It was a weakness for Gronk. He learned it. Yes, because he bulks up. But so could Evan Ingram. He's twenty four years old. Right, but they drafted Ingram for his speed, not for his blocking ability. He's going to merge, emerge, as a talent. I'm telling you, people. Now. Here's the part that should really just make everyone settle down. Jason Garrett's failures are not outside the NFC East. They're against outside divisions. Bad. He beats good teams, and he beats his division. Jason Garrett now knows the Eagles' defense. He knows the Redskins' defense. And you know sure as shit he knows the Dallas Cowboy defense. Yeah, and the defensive coordinators know Jason Garrett, too. <laughs> But they are not going to know what Jason Garrett and Joe Judge are going to do. That's what I'm telling you. Now, Mike McCarthy's defense will be different. I, I, I completely get that. Mike McCarthy's defense will be different than what Jason Garrett ran in Dallas. But it's the talent he still knows. Like Leighton Van Der Esch, this is his strength. Jalen Smith, this is his strength. Byron Jones is gone. You don't have to worry about him. Xavier Woods, this is what he does. Uh, Awuzier, this is what he does. Marcus Lawrence, this is how you can protect him. The Giants' flaws are no longer... Now, again, we have to see what the play calling is. We need to see what they bring in. But I'm pretty sure the Giants know what they're building. I'm very confident in this Joe Judge guy. I like him a lot. I think Joe Judge, coming from the Belichick tree, the discipline that the Giants haven't had in years with Ben McAdont and... uh, 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 Sherm who? <laughs> I mean, that, that that guy was worse than Ben McAdoo. Nah, I wouldn't go that far. Nah, it's, it's closer than you think. But I, for the life of me, think that this brings stability and it just kind of gets the Giants out of this, uh, we don't, uh, you got guys going offense, defense, offense, defense. And here's this guy. Hello. I'm just going to bring stability to your organization, and talent will be fine. All right, great. Come, come, come. Sit, coach, talk. He's going to command the room. I've read reports that players have said unanimously that when Bill Belichick wasn't in the room, that guy was the guy that ran the room. What do you hear about in Dallas? Jason Garrett. He was the grown-up in the room. Do you think... That Saquon Barkley is going to give him the same problem Ezekiel Elliott gave him? No. Hey, uh, Saquon, uh, I think you should catch more out of the back. I think you're right, Jason. Really? Yeah, I think you're right. I'll catch the ball more out of the back. No, shit. I never got told that before. Okay, thank you, Saquon. No problem, man. You're my coach. This is all to benefit the giant strengths. Where are the weaknesses? Offensive line. You know why that doesn't matter? Saquon Barkley's a thousand-yard rusher every year in the league, and the offensive line got... 
awful. Yeah, it's just they're bad. They're going to succeed. They're going to need more than just a thousand. That well, right. But unless my point, Daniel Jones takes an insane leap, but I don't, I don't know. He was all right. Either. He was good. He was. He was bad. good at times, but he was very inconsistent. All I'm saying is, New York fans have a hysteria about things, like firing Joe Girardi. How many people raved about that? Now look, oh, then Chris Staff Porzingis. You booed him out of the building. Now look. The guy's a star in Dallas, and everyone wants him back. <laughs> now, look at the New York Jets. Do we really need to get into the New York Jets? I don't think so. By the way. They're better run than the Knicks are. <laughs> sure. That's not saying much. The Lyland Ducks are ran better than the New York Knicks are. What the hell does that mean? This network is ran better than the New York Knicks are. What does that mean? The crackhead outside runs a better organization than the New York Knicks do. I, uh, like, uh, where, where, where does that even make sense? I'm just saying. This store with the lights off is ran better than I the New York Knicks. I you were ranking the New York teams and how they were run. No. Oh. Islanders are the worst. The Jets are second worst. No. The Knicks are second worst. Then the Jets. Really? The Knicks are easily the worst. <laughs> no. Yeah, they are. The Mets are the worst. Mets are probably second. I think the Knicks are worse. No, because the Mets don't spend money at all. The Knicks will spend a little bit. Yeah, I'd rather I'd rather not spend money and grow a team homegrown than but spend they don't do that either. Mo- yeah. They trade yeah, their okay, homegrown. Okay, okay, okay. I'm not saying they do well at it, but I'd rather take the chance on that than cash strap $150 million on Joakim Noah. <laughs> Listen, I, I just really think we need to all sell down and still just understand the complexities of what's going on. This guy, and again, the Mara Belichick relationship shows through and through. Hey, who would you hire? Now, oh, this Joe Judge guy is really good. All right, great. The defensive coordinator you're not going to hire because he's brand new. This was his first year. You're not. And the defense is always Belichick's child. It's not the defensive coordinator. Very rarely matters. But after watching Brian Flores last year, whew, Brian Flores was a steal. An absolute steal from the Patriots. Now, the Giants' defensive coordinator, everyone's probably going to go, well, then that means our defense coordinator sucks if it's Brian Flores. No. The defensive coordinator from Miami did a pretty good job, too. The problem now is you're relying on a lot of Believe it or not, I actually have more faith in Garrett than the defensive guy. Um, really? Yeah, because Jason Garrett's been an OC and he's been a head coach. He knows his place. He knows what to do, what not to do. He knows when things are going wrong, do this, not this. This defensive coordinator is relatively new in the grand scheme of things. That's fair, but I think... He so he's going to he's gonna make some young coach mistakes. Just like Joe Judge is going to make young coach mistakes. I'm it doesn't saying, mean they're bad. It means they haven't done this before. Him what he doing what he did, though, in the second half of the season for the Dolphins. Because they did definitely right. improve on defense. Yes, they did. With a very similarly not very talented defense. A very similarly young defense. Right. I the only we'll, problem we'll is Xavier Howard more. is more talented than anyone in the Giants. But Xavier Howard was hurt for much of the second half of the season when they were doing well. So he knew how to work without Xavier Howard, too. And that's after they traded... All year safety, Minka Fitzpatrick. So I, I, I like what they're doing. I, I think that everyone needs to really sell down with this bashing the Giants crap. This is all to benefit the team. What are your strengths? Saquon Barkley. What else? Not much. I mean, that's really See, the. Tr- the thing is, though, you can do that, though, and have a coach help in other areas, though, too. Help sure. improve the weaknesses and let Saquon do But his that's thing. what he's going to do. By the way, Special teams, kind of a strength for the Giants, too. Rosas is a uh, top kicker in football, which doesn't mean much. And the punter is the punter. The punter, the punter will never – I could take the Miami, Mar- the Miami Marlins, the Miami Dolphins punter every single speed playoffs. You know why? It doesn't matter. Punting is so – if you have a great punter, more, po- more kudos to you. The Baltimore Ravens have the best special teams in football, right? They got – Beat at home again, and they went fourteen and two. It means nothing. It really, it means absolutely nothing. 
Am I going to pick our picks later on based on, oh, well, you know, the Chiefs have the best punter left in the playoffs. They're going to win the Super Bowl. Now the no. Titan, now the Titans do. They're, they're oh, all pro. okay, Jack. Yes. All okay. Pro. <laughs> okay, I'm so sorry. Brent Kern. Okay, great. But everyone calm down. I think it's going to be a very silly thing to have such quick judgment. <laughs> I'm here all week. Um, but, I, I, again, I think we should just have Garrettude and just be fine. Oh, my well, God. I can only help. Garrettude, get it? Garrett, Garrettitude, put them together. Yes, I'm here all week long. I really think that I am just a pun master. Anyway, uh, when we come back, I get to bash the Houston Astros again for more allegations that Major League Baseball has to come down on once again. Find out why next on the home stretch. You're, you're, you're listening to the Worldwide Sports Radio Network. And, and, and now the baseball team. Little League. Fantasy League. We are back, back, back with the home stretch on the Worldwide Sports Radio Network. Hello. Welcome back to the home stretch. I'm your host, Ty Harrison, still with Speedy Petey. Um, this uh, next topic is really just to prove how right I was about a lot of different things. But, um, yeah, we're try- I'm trying to find something, so I apologize. Uh, Speedy, introduce the Astros topic, would you please? So, the Houston Astros, obviously we know they have been caught for ele- electronic sign stealing. And as a result, their GM, Jeff Lunau, A.J. Hinch, got fired on Monday. And in the wake of all of it, Carlos Beltran one of the players that could potentially be involved, obviously more pending, I would imagine, and I think they're still trying to investigate the players, but Carlos Beltran, who got hired before the results of the investigation came out, he got hired by the Mets as a manager. He stepped down yesterday. They claim it was him stepping down. Beltran claims it was mutual. I don't know what what to believe with that, but that is the latest right now with, with that. The Astros and Red Sox still, they're also being investigating, too. This sign-stealing thing is definitely the biggest topic in baseball right now, and it's spreading around in terms of just how teams make decisions as for everyone. And now the Mets are getting involved in this, too, and they will now have to find a new manager. Yes, they are. Um, I'm just looking up one quick thing before I say whether or not he should be penalized for it. Beltron getting penalized for what? For the cheating? No, nope, nothing. All right, I was going to say something, but I, I... So, all right, here we go. Ready? Um, just had to look up something real quick because I really didn't plan on going this route. Um, SB alluded to calls Beltron fired. Let's call it what it is, right? He was fired yesterday by the New York Mets. Um, right around when this show started yesterday. Um, I hate leaving topics like that on the table, but I only had an hour and the Aaron Hernandez thing was the perfect length, I guess, to talk about, um, serious enough, but not too, uh, whatever. Um, but I, w- this is a very heavy story. There's a lot of different avenues. It has again veered its ugly head in Major League Baseball. Now it's not even just... The sign stealing. They're now saying that Alex Bregman and Jose Altuve were wearing buzzers under their jersey to kind of uh, Morse code what pitch was coming. Which so, is a continuation of electronic sign stealing. Right. Yes. Um, but that that to me that draws the line here. There needs to be permanent life abandonment now. Somebody's going to have to go. Uh, whether it's Cor- uh, Carlos Beltran, to be quite honest with you. Shouldn't have been fired at all by the New York Mets. Um, And the reason I say that was he didn't – who the mastermind of it, we don't really know. Trust me, that's going to get – that will come out. We don't really know who started it. Everyone knew about it. Everyone okayed it. That's fine. Alex Cora, we know for a fact, took it to the Red Sox and did it again. That is something that – Alex Cora, Alex Cora is probably going to be the guinea pig here. He's probably going to get the one that gets banned for life. Um, again, He's involved in both cases, I think he has to be. Right. You're not talking about Pete Rose. You're not talking about a Hall of Fame player. You're talking about 
a guy that was brilliant but never really put it together during his own career. Now, I do want to mention one thing that kind of really, really makes me mad because now you've got jackasses like Trevor Bauer coming out and saying some things that really don't need to be said. But um, I'm reading this rumor right now. Just give me one second because if I have to defend this guy, then Major League Baseball's in its own tailspin. So, apparently, and I know I all talked about this yesterday, the fact that this is getting any attention to Joe. Oh, yeah. If you think Mike Trout is on HGH and you're hanging your hat on the end, if that happens, if that happens, uh, we joked about this two days ago. If this happens, Major League Baseball is done forever. I it's done. It, it, it's done. It's over. Happen. If Mike Trout is on HGH, Baseball's in trouble. I don't think he did anything. <laughs> no, and Major League Baseball has I think, actually I just think, released a statement on such. I think David Brocious, like I said on his show yesterday, just is saying he's making an accusation on on Trout uh, when Trout said, all right, there should be nobody in baseball doing any kind of right. steroids or amphetamines or whatever. And Mike Trout's obviously not specifically targeting Scott Brocious, but – He's targeting that era of baseball. Right. When he and says that. You got to take it with a grain of salt. That's not even what you take away from that statement. This is what you take away. So this is what made no players ever received therapeutic use exception from HGH, which basically means Mike Trout is not illegally doing HGH. Take that with a grain of salt because if Mike Trout's doing HGH, Major League Baseball is not going to tell you. So that's one thing. Um, I'm with you. I don't think Mike Trout did do HGH. And here's why. Who was Mike Trout's favorite player growing up? He was a Phillies fan. Um, Mm-mm. He wasn't a Philly. He wasn't a Philly? His favorite player? No, no. he was, he was a, a Philly right. sports right, fan. Right, 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 right. Think very local. And Derek think of, Jeter? Yes. Oh. Wow. So Mike Trout grew up a Derek Jeter fan. Derek Jeter was his favorite player. I heard now, that with Tulowitzki. I didn't hear that with Trout. Okay. Here's the thing. Derek Jeter was the epitome of do baseball the right way. So now, when you look at it, it's very, very complex. But it just can't be. It just cannot be so. If Mike Trout is on... I couldn't even imagine. I couldn't even imagine. And Mike Trout used HGH. It's over. It's over. I'm trying to read where he admits Derek Jeter. I'm, it might not have been Derek Jeter. It might have been too low. Yeah, because I know Tulo definitely said that he, that was his favorite player. But Mike Trout, he's always been a Philly sports fan. No, I know he's a Philly sports fan. up in New Jersey. So, I mean, I guess you could have a favorite player. I'm not saying that you can't like players on other teams and be influenced by them. But Oh, wow, the Giants are bringing in another guy, too. Burton Burns from Alabama. Burton Burns? Yes. What is he? He's what, linebacker coach or something? Mm. I recognize the name, but I forget what his position was. I don't know. But, yeah, Mike Trout on HGH is just kind of ridiculous. I mean, we just need to stop grasping for things is what I take away from this. Right. Um, People will say things just to make a story. Yeah, th- this is not even this is this is a joke. Um, again, we. But again, I've taken journalism journalism classes. You know what they tell you? Misshaping the truth is great for business. Oh yeah, it causes uh, suspicion. That's yeah, I I have to be on. But I don't know. After watching the Sean Taylor thing, the football life of Sean Taylor, now the Aaron Hernandez. 
I'm kind of, I don't know. The media just has a weird way of warping things. But then when the truth, like, oh, well, hmm. Like, again, I keep going back to this Duke lacrosse case, right? The media had these kids painted to dead. They were done. That's it. They're done. They should be, they're criminals. They are, you know, give them the book, throw them all away. Duke canceled their lacrosse program because of these kids, because of the allegations going on, right? They, these kids were so missly, um, that's, that, that's not even a word. They were so unfairly treated, they sued the state and won. That, that's how lopsided this case got. And when they did that, did you hear a word? No. No, you didn't. But all you heard was these kids are rapists, and they did this, and they're going to go to jail, and blah, blah, blah. They're animals. They're this, they're that. And they all sat there saying, we did nothing, and we're really glad this will be over soon. Duke canceled their program, lost a lot of high-star recruits to go. And trust me, in high school, trying to go to Duke lacrosse, I was kind of bummed out. I actually quit playing lacrosse because they dropped the program. I was like, ah, well, that sucks. Nothing to do here. Bada boom, bada bing. Oh, well, I guess not. Okay, great. We'll bring it back. Oh, well, that's great. You know, uh, so it, the media the media mistakes everything. Is that not existent right now? No, they brought it back. They brought it back like a year or two afterwards. I, was say, I thought they were ranked. John Danowski came. He tore it up. at points. So. Yeah, no, they're like, they, Matt Danowski was probably the greatest cross player college hockey's ever seen. But, um, yeah, so Duke, Duke won out. But, again, uh, you just gotta, you just got to take everything you hear with a grain of salt. This Mike Trout thing is ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. And I guarantee you he heard from tea leaves. He didn't hear from somebody firsthand. And now he's reporting it as fact because, well, even his dad. When you think of those New York Yankees teams, Scott Brocious is not a major guy on that list. A diehard Yankee fan doesn't remember Scott Brocious. Like, Scott Brocious, to me, his fine, defining moment was the home run he hit in 2001 to force game five or force game four. I, I, or he did, I can't even remember the details of the home run, but I know it was the home run in the World Series that Tino hit the game winner. Or he hit, he hit a home run to either force extra innings or he won the game. But that's his, that's his highlight, winning those World Series with the Yankees. They lost in 2001 because Bunyan Kim and Tony Womack. I, I'm not going over this, but it hurts my soul. But that, that, that's what he's known for. And, you know, to have his dad, to have his son, rather, come out and make a statement like that, I don't know. It, just, it doesn't seem right. Now you got Trevor Bauer going out there, who's doing a Q&A on Twitter today, right? And let's just see what he, this guy had to say. <laughs> I I was in shock. I, I hear I hear him say things all the time. I'm like, oh, you gotta be kidding. Okay, here's Trevor Bauer. Right, uh, the beef with Alex Bregman is fine because Alex Bregman's a cheater. Uh, he said 10 percent of Major League Baseball uses PEDs, and every team's pitchers cheat. The Houston Astros should keep the title. This is on the same day. That Jack McDowell, or Jack McConnell, Jack McDowell. I'm trying to remember who that is. The Chicago White Sox 1980s pitcher. Oh, yeah, McDowell. He actually says that in the 1980s, Tony La Russa did the same thing. Uh, Tony La Russa? Well, maybe, because La- the Cardinals were investigated for something like that. At, before the, Even before the hacking thing, they were investigating for some sign-stealing thing. So maybe there's some truth to that. But I'm not. Uh, here's what the, would they have available to them to use then? Here's know? the problem they, I have. They're not going to have the camera technology then. No, to be able I, to do no. It. I, I, I didn't really read his full comment. I got disgusted, and that was about it. Here's my problem with everyone coming to the aid of the Astros. Are they the first ones to cheat? No, they're not. I've openly admitted this. You go back to the 1919 White Sox, or Black Sox, rather. That's what happened. They're banned for life. Shoeless Joe Jackson to this day is still banned by Major League Baseball. We're almost, we are exactly 100 years away. That was 100 years ago. They're not the first ones to cheat. Steroids, they're not the first ones to cheat. They're the first ones to 
cheat in a way no one's seen before. No one has thought of using the type of technology the way they did, except the Boston Red Sox a year later, which is why their manager is going to be banned for life. This is a problem that needs to go away. And I said on Tuesday, the punishment was too light. The punishment did not fit the crime. The crime, you got away with murder is what happened. And now what happened? Since, two, since Saturday or Sunday when they dropped these bombshells of the stiffest punishment we've ever seen, what's come out and happened? Well, not only did we cheat in more ways than you thought, we actually cheated more in depth than you thought. So now, you really got away with it, right? You cannot come down again on the Houston Astros. Guess who you're going to have to come down on? The Boston Red Sox. The Boston Red Sox are absolutely going to get the punishment we all thought the Astros would get. Because Major League Baseball... They use a replay room. They did it more. (laughs) But the brainchild is Alex Cora. The brainchild... Right. So the brainchild stems from Houston. Houston allowed it. Houston okayed it. Houston gave him the ability to get to the point where he got. That's why the Houston Red Sox should... did it times five. <laughs> right. If, but my point to you if is... I believe what I believe. Correct. What happened with the replay room. Correct. But here's my point with why the Astros deserve to get more punished than the Red Sox. The Red Sox hawks Alex Cora because of who? His success with the Astros and what the Astros praised him to be. They knew what he did. They knew how he got there. The Red Sox, say what you want about the Boston Red Sox. The Boston, I'm a Yankee fan, okay? I grew up hating the Red Sox for about 20 years. I still hate the Red Sox. Here's the problem, okay, with the Boston Red Sox getting punished. They are a very well-respected, very well-ran franchise that always tries to do the right thing by their team and their fans. They're not going to hire this guy if the Houston Astros tell him, well, you know, he kind of, you know, doesn't really know that much. He just kind of right, why, why would the Astros reveal anything like that then, anyway? Right. The ownership was going to cover up for Cora. There's no way they would reveal something like that. Fine. But you don't put your neck out for him and give him a rave review to be a team's manager, knowing that he's going to bring what you already did to another team. That, to me, means if the Houston Astros knew it was a problem, right, but they're expanding the problem to other major league teams. I don't think they would do that, though. But they did do that because they put yeah. out a rave review about Alex Cora. Why? And that's why the Red Sox decided so on him. Were, so you're going to say, uh, no, 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 he's not ready? It's so not, wait a minute. Hold it's on. Not, it's wait. not a coach with a young quarterback. We're, deal, we're not dealing with something like that. It's, it's a bench coach and a manager and ownership. Correct. A.J. Hinch got fo- fired for a year, probably more than that. He's probably done coaching okay. because of this allegation. Okay. The ownership is going to get nothing. So Alex Cora has to get a penalty stiffer than A.J. Hinch. Yeah, if he's involved in both cases, yeah. <laughs> so here's my point. The New York Mets took in Carlos Beltran, right, mm-hmm. because of the fact they had a prior relationship with him. He was a Met, and he knows the New York media. Those are three key points. Oh, by the way, he's a Hall of Fame player. That all kind of gels together into being, all right, we'll hire you as our coach. The Red Sox had no interaction, to my knowledge, with Alex Cora beforehand. I don't remember him being a Red Sox. He's not a Hall of Fame player. And to be quite frank, I was surprised the Astros signed him at all to be a coach or a player or anything. So there's really... Not too much here to go based on your success was because you cheated. Well, he played there, so I think if there's any inheriting for the Astros to bring him in as a coach. Sure. Okay, great. He played there. Fine. Great. Awesome. The Boston Red Sox took this guy in because of what he did in Houston and the success that Houston said they'd bring the franchise. He, Boston would not have signed him or hired him knowing what they knew. The Mets didn't need to know anything because they already had a relationship with Beltron. Right. They already that, relied on him. Fair. They respected him enough. So to say that these two guys are equal, you're out of your freaking mind. You're nuts. Beltron did not deserve to get fired. And Beltron now, probably... Do you think the Mets actually fired him? Or you think, the, I think, you think the it Bel- was mutual? You think no, he actually it definitely out? wasn't mutual. There's no way it was mutual. Carlos Beltron wanted to be a manager last year, and he, no one hired him. So he went to the Yankees to be a special assistant. 
I swear, if you think the Yankees cheated because of Carlos Beltran, now, you're out of your mind. But, hold on. Okay. Beltran wanted to be a manager, and no one hired him. He put his name in for the Cardinals job. They didn't want to hire anybody. They wanted Schilt after the job he did this year, or even his interim job last year. So they didn't want to hire anybody. No one else opened up with a job that Beltron really wanted. They were either small market teams or they had their successor already announced. The Giant job, he didn't put his hat in for because why the hell would anyone want to go to the Giants right now? They are an organization that was too blind to see that you needed to trade your best player in the past 10 years so you don't lose him for nothing. They didn't do that. They're going to be the worst team in baseball next year. And, and they gave Kapler. Kapler. <laughs> right. They hired Kapler. The Philly job. The Philly job, Joe Girardi had in his hands the entire time. And the Mets kind of wavered with Beltron or Girardi. The reason they went with Beltron was because Brody Van Wigenen wants the team ran his way, and Beltron's going to respect that wish. Point blank, period. You can't run a team Van Wagenen's way and do what Cora did. It's not going to work. It, it, mm. Brody Van Wigenen's too dumb to cheat. He, he, wouldn't, he wouldn't figure it out. Well, why don't we just go there, uh, you know, have somebody film behind home plate in their jersey? Yeah. Why would we do that? Hey, Jed Lowry was out all year. He, he could have filmed something. <laughs> Jed Low- I like Jed Lowry. I wanted the Yankees to sign Jed Lowry. Yeah, but he, he played, what, a month with the Mets, if even? Still. Oh, I know. <laughs> all I'm saying to you. The Mets have enough injured players where they could, they could make them seem like cameramen. Tim Tebow? <laughs> yeah. Uh, actually, no. Tim Tebow will probably get recognized right away. <laughs> no, probably. Now, my my thing was this because I actually had an interesting theory because they said it as all right. He stepped down. No, he didn't step. Down. Now, again, whether that's true or not, I don't know. But do you think there is a possibility that he might have been covering up for somebody, a player with the Astros, maybe ownership with the Astros, and make it seem like all right, I'm guilty. I'll admit it now when it really wasn't him. No. I think Major League Baseball came to the Mets and said, we're either going to suspend your manager for a year or he walks away. And the Mets said, well, Carlos, we don't want to lose you, but this is kind of the position we're in. And Carlos Beltran said, well, then I'll step down and you guys don't have to take the punishment and you won't have to pay me. Right. So Just... I, I, here's the thing about why I don't think Carlos Beltran would take the blame for anybody. I think it's quite clear to see who did what. Okay, um, the pl- Now, here's the thing, right? A- and this is why I'm extra mad about the situation. Brian McCann's on this team. So, I, I don't know. I-, I really don't know. But I'll tell you this right now. If this becomes a league-wide problem, it's going to be bad. It's going to be ugly. It's going to be ugly. I, I can't imagine the Yankees – if the Yankees get busted doing this, I don't know. I, I, I couldn't even imagine the tirade I'd go on. I mean, for radio fans, it'd probably be great, but I, I think I'd actually lose a gasket. I would, I would, I would yes, demand you, – you, you would open it with, oh, come on. Come on, Major League Baseball. Suspend Aaron Boone for a year. <laughs> Here's the problem with that. Who the <laughs> hell would run the team? Marcus Timms? Oh. <laughs> Actually, Marcus Timms might do Aaron Boone's job better. <laughs> and that is your daily shot at Aaron Boone. No, it's not. I think Marcus <laughs> Timms is, I, I, to be quite frank with you, I think Marcus Timms is a better. I think Marcus Timms is a brilliant coach. But I don't know. I, I just don't see how this is. I don't know. I, I really think Cor- Cora's getting banned for life. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. Here's where I'm taking this now, though. The reason the penalty was soft is you didn't penalize the championship, you didn't take anything away, and no player got it suspended. I think more players will get suspended. At some oh, point. Jose Atube is about to get suspended more than anyone's ever seen. I think, I think they're just looking more for actual evidence right now on Bregman? specifically which ones because – you can't just suspend, I think, all just the whole 25-man No, 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 you can't. No, that's without, fine. Without proof. I think they're that's looking fine. at who specifically may have You're looking had at three guys. the devices, had the, like they were saying, the, uh, with the microphones that were attached or whatever they were finding. I'm the looking buzzers. at three guys. They're going to look into that more and 
maybe who was giving the signals, three guys. voices. I think they're more looking for hard proof. Three, three guys. Brian McCann, you're the leader of the team. You're going to get about 35, 40 games. Okay. Alex Bregman, you're the young upcoming superstar, and you're most linked to it, and you seem to be running your mouth a lot. I'm going to give you about 80 to 100 games. Altuve, guess what you get, my friend? You're the face of the franchise. You're probably the best player they have. Bye-bye, MVP title. Bye-bye. Gone. You're not carrying that around anymore. Bye-bye. Aaron Judge, here you go. Oh, by the way, you're suspended a year and a half. Goodbye. See you next July. Out of here. Bye-bye. Good day. Now, again, the logic makes sense on who the players are, but do you know if they actually led the There's operation? A, yes. It's two different and here's the, here's the clip that I'm going to tell everybody to watch. YouTube. He hits the World Series in the home run. He's literally holding his jersey saying, don't touch my jersey. Don't touch my jersey. And he's literally chugging at his jersey like so. I got the thing on me. Don't knock it out. Is basically what I think he's saying. Altuve is the mastermind of everything. I I think Altuve and Hinch are connected at the seams with this. Okay, AJ Hinch is full of shit. That that's the first thing. Okay, he's absolutely full of shit. There's no way he said, "No, we're gonna stop this. We're gonna stop this now." It's one of those things where like. You're not working, and your boss knows you're not working, but you don't want everyone else to know you're not working. Hey, uh, Stevenson, yeah? How's your report coming along? I'm almost done, Steve. I'm almost done. Meanwhile, you're playing Tetris under the table. That, that's literally what the Houston Astros did. I know they did nothing. I tried to stop it. It didn't work. You're the manager of the team. You benched them. What do you mean it didn't work? Well... I tried to win baseball games. I did nothing wrong. GM said the same thing. I didn't know anything. I didn't know that they were cheating. I just signed guys to... I, I, I didn't know they were cheating. All right. Okay, you're a liar too. And the owner, I didn't know anything. Yeah, okay. You're just paying billions of dollars to a team and you don't know what's going on. You're all full of crap. You're all full of it. If this was the Patriots, we would want them suspended for life. We will want them taken out of the NFL. But because it's the Astros, and oh, they're so, oh, they're so innocent. Oh, oh, oh. You're full of it. Nobody said they were innocent. No, I know, but. I'm just saying, I don't think the reason players were suspended yet is they're looking for evidence. I don't think it's going to be completely, all right, we're going to forget about the players. Up, oh, you just go on. No, I don't think they'll be like that. I think they're just trying to figure out specific culprits and specific, like I said, law evidence. I, I'm telling you, those are the three that I spend the most. Uh, I'm very disappointed, Brian McCann. I, 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 I have to be honest. It so hurts. you think Brian McCann was the leader of the operation? No, but I think as a leader in the locker room, if you knew something and didn't say something, then God damn it, you're, you're as bad as I thought. Now, here's an, I, here's an interesting thought, though, too. Brian McCann, I think that was his first year there, too. Yes. Yes, so you really think he would have been that much of a, I guess, leader of that kind of operation? Yes, because they brought him in to do that. You're going to help mentor the young catcher, and you're going to, you know, DH and do what you have to do when you're at home. Because I feel like uh, something like this, that especially... It wasn't his idea, but he didn't stop it. No, I didn't say it was his idea. I'm saying it was... Something that is very thorough with the technology, the cameras now, if they have the microphones and the buzzers. It feels like it, that would be something that would have to be planned out beforehand. By a general manager or a manager? Right, yes. and ownership. Yes. Probably buy, buying a lot of that equipment that wouldn't have been thought of before that. So that's why I, I don't think a new player would have had that much influence in that. Maybe later on he could have been one of the guys if he was in a slump or something like that. All right, I'm in a slump. Let's see. I'll, I'll, t- I'll take the microphone. I'll take the buzzer this time. Maybe. But, again, it's 
tough until we actually have proof of it right now. And right now, the only evidence we can see is what we saw with Josh Reddick, the little microphone that was on there the, that was taped up, and maybe what you're saying with Altuve. Now, the physical shape of the buzzer has not been known with Altuve. We know the Altuve thing from just don't rip off my jersey. From, what, reading lips, I guess? Right. Because I don't think anyone actually has audio proof of that either. But he obviously was resistant on the jersey, and he was yelling pretty emphatically the way the way it seemed like he was speaking. So there is some suspicion with that, too. But beyond that, we don't have hard evidence yet to ne- necessarily lay anything down on the players. Once it does happen, I think it can. But there needs to be evidence. All I know is I really cannot tell you without a shadow of a doubt I've told you that my order of operations are baseball, hockey, ba- foot, uh, hockey, football, basketball, right? Operations? Like uh, No, but like based on preference. Like I'd watch a hockey game before I watch a football game. Oh, really? And I'd pick. Oh, okay. Yeah, baseball is my favorite sport. I, I know that. I thought you had football too, hockey three. Okay. Um, I'm going to tell you right now. I, I, I'm debating on just not watching baseball. Like, this this is ridiculous. And the fact that they could ruin a sport this quickly. And major, here's the thing about Major League Baseball. They're not even acting like they care. They really don't. To me, they don't. Like, how can you just, well, here's the draft picks. Here, I think, and here's just me, right? I think they're afraid that there are going to be more teams that come out of the closet about this and be like, oh, well, we do it too. Oh, well, we do it too. Oh, well, we do it too. Then, then you're you're beyond the steroid scandal. The steroid scandal was just star players juicing stats. Now you're talking about teams cheating. That ain't cool. That if that comes out that way, Major League Baseball is in trouble, and I, I would probably stop watching. Now you got Mike Trout and Jeopard. Stop. And I honestly, I believe this with my heart of hearts. I think the Mike Trout thing was only brought up to get away from this. I don't think maybe. They, even. I mean, it could be just a guy spreading a rumor. <laughs> I just can't believe that. I Major League Baseball, I think, is just planting seed. Mike Trout. Uh, I I uh, I don't know, but this needs to stop. And it's Houston. You have a problem. Nice. That was good. Thank nice. You. Um, that that I, I can't, uh, and I guarantee you, there will be more over the weekend that comes out. And on Tuesday, I'm just getting more mad about it. And, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's where I'm at with this. But we all know what tomorrow – well, actually, I think all the games are Sunday. All are Sunday. So we all know what Sunday is. Um, the New York Rangers take on the Columbus Blue Jackets. That's what everyone's going to be watching. Our Temi Panarin revenge game. <laughs> oh, well, the Rangers are white hot, man. They are uh, playing their best hockey right now. This, mm-hmm. See how far out of the play. Oh, my God. I think it's six points they're out. Yeah, but that's not what I look at when I look at these things. Well, yeah, it's how many teams you got to jump to. No, that's not even what I look at. Goal so, differential? Oh, here we go. <laughs> what are you looking at? Goal differential? No, I'm looking at. So the Sabres, Panthers, and Flyers are all above the, and the Blue Jackets and Hurricanes, right? So they are all above the Rangers. The Sabres, Flyers, Blue Jackets, and Hurricanes all have more games played than the Rangers. Oh, okay. Yeah, games at hand is always key, but you would want the point differential to at least still be manageable, like a three or a two. I think the Rangers are still seven back. No, they're two. From the second spot or from the first team out? Oh, differential. They're at a positive two. They're two points out of who the Flyers. Oh no, I thought you meant goal differential. Is no, that what you said? No, I said. No, I'm sorry. Yes, they may have a game or two at hand on those teams, but that I only think would matter once they gain the ground that they're 
they're gaining. Now, if they were two points, three points back of that team with two games at hand, I would say, all right, that's makeable. But still being seven points back. Six. Six. It's the Flyers are at six at 48 points because I know the Rangers are 42. No, the Rangers have 50. Oh, the Rangers are not. All right. Sabres have 51. The Panthers have 55. The Flyers, Blue Jackets, and Hurricanes have 56. All right. I probably meant 52. But all right. So they are six six points back with the Flyers of the Flyers with two games at hand. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if they were three, I'd be more comfortable with six leaping that many teams. It's still going to be very hard. Plus, I'm imagining some of them will play each other, so some will have to win, too. But them being mostly Atlantic teams in that grouping, with the exception of the Flyers and the Hurricanes. Can I just make a wish? Zach Werninski in New York? That would be a great wish, but it will never happen. <laughs> Him and Chuba would be a perfect pair. All right, well, I guess there's no reason to watch Sunday then, so what else is on Sunday? By the way, the Probably Flyers some. have scored five goals. I mean, the Lightning scored five goals in a matter of, like, <laughs> I can't even tell you how fast. Well, they redeemed themselves after lo losing yesterday. <laughs> they scored five straight. <laughs> wow. No, Kucherov and Anthony Sorelli have two. Wow, Sorelli has two goals? Yeah. He's a third-line, fourth-line player. Wow. He's young, too. I know. He's but got 30 points this year. Not bad. It's, it's, it, their depth is freaking ridiculous. John Cooper, it's a bittersweet sword, buddy, but <laughs> if you lose this year, you're out. So I suggest you win a Stanley Cup. Especially with uh, LaViolette now available. Wow, Dayton won in <laughs> overtime. Yeah, they did. Uh, they Game winner with point one seconds to go. They were down. I was up 27-18 over Michigan. Yeah, they just got a nice run. Wisconsin lost to Michigan State. All right. No real upsets today. Oh, wow. That, Dayton that came looked... back nicely and then collapsed. And then it was kind of a back and forth overtime. Cool, cool. But uh, Sunday, obviously. We play the Super Bowl, baby. Woo! Oh, the Titans moved to the NFC? Nice. No. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, we do set up the Super Bowl. Titans Chiefs at Arrowhead, and Green Bay travels to San Francisco to take on the Niners. I got to tell you, man, I think this year's Super Bowl is going to be pretty lopsided. Really? Yeah, I, I still haven't made up my mind, actually, about the AFC Championship game, to be quite frank. I, I don't know who I'm picking yet. But we're going to take a quick break. Uh, again, if anyone wants to call the show, I, I haven't mentioned this yet. We have another number. 845-767-1111. Um, That's it? Mm -hmm. hmm, okay. Yeah, that's the number to call. Um, again, if you want to, I'm not really. I don't really care if anyone calls anymore because um, no one really argues. Jeff, <laughs> except for Anthony Carragher, <laughs> well, he's wrong all the time. <laughs> he still argues. <laughs> I know, but I don't know. And like, you know what really pisses me off about Carragher? And he's admitted as much. I've always thought that. He just pisses me off to piss me off. <laughs> like, you don't actually believe what you're telling me. Like, you just talk to talk. And it's like you... It, 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 uh, the Wednesday, he told me the same thing. He's like, hey, Mike, I'm going to piss off Tyler. Okay, do it. Boom, boom, boom. Like, you idiot! Ah! Like, uh, it's... But, you know, it, behind the barricade every Sunday, if you're not going to watch it for him, watch it for Rodney. Please watch it for Rodney. Don't watch it for him. It, 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 please. I feel like just coming on on one Sunday and being like, now what? <laughs> you know? 
problem is I work some days. I promise you, one day I'm going to get over there on Sunday. I'm going to, I'm going to, F sh- I'm going to ruin that show. <laughs> I'm going to ruin it. Mm-hmm. It'll be the most watched show of all time. So Rodney, yeah? You think I can hit Anthony Carragher in the head with this chair from here? Let's see. Foom! Problem with that is Errol doesn't like anyone moving anything, so it's going to be awkward to explain why the door broke. But Plus, if you throw a chair, there's a good likelihood you hit the camera. And God forbid you move the camera. God forbid you even put a wind gust towards the camera. Yeah, right. Oh, yeah, he'll, that's true. He'll that notice means. it. So. Yeah, no. he will. If you're going to throw a chair, you'll have to You know what's crazy? Right Imagine he like didn't that. care about the broken door. Oh, the door's broke. Somebody move the camera! Oh, well, that's what you can't so I, think the, I think the best likelihood would be if you were to swing the chair, just have it get there early and <laughs> mm. <laughs> wait till it walks in. Because usually he doesn't, he's not there at the beginning of the show. Mm. <laughs> mm. Ooh, I get him over the head with one of those chairs. Metal. Might not, it might knock sense into him, honestly. It could be the best thing that's ever happened to him. Metal helps will drive you mad. Stop bringing up Aaron Hernandez. We did that yesterday. Uh, no, I brought up Quiet Riot. <laughs> well, not mental health. I said metal health. <laughs> oh, I'm the song. <laughs> oh, I didn't. I didn't know. I'm sorry. Whoopsie, whoopsie. Um. So yeah, we're gonna take a quick break. And again, this is the ones that count, right? Um. I was three and one last weekend. What were you? One and three. Two and two. Two and two. Okay. Two and How two we one. agreed on only one game. We agreed on only the Chiefs game. Yeah, we agreed on only the Chiefs. I got the Packers right, and you got the other two right. 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 Right, right, right. Right. That's right. The Packers did upset the Seattle Seahawks. They didn't upset. They were favored. <laughs> no, it's an upset because Seattle got screwed. Maybe. No, definitely. But anyway. Oh, watch where the ball, the marker wasn't, re- the TV marker and the marker on the field weren't the same marker. They were completely different placements. They are, um, they're not the same. They, no, he made it. It was a first down. You're just mad. No, he was short. He yeah. was short, but it was a tough one to overturn, though, because it, right. he it, was was, short. it was very close. I thought he was still short, too, but it, it was a tough one to overturn where you need the conclusive evidence. Uh, it's, it was sure it, he made it. He made it definitively. Like stop, like just let them eat their cheese. It's all right. Like they won a football game. It's not that big of a deal. It's fine. For someone <sighs> who hates the Vikings, you love to mock the Packers too. <laughs> I, I hate Aaron Rodgers. Like shut the, just oh. How people feel about Tom Brady is how I feel about Aaron Rodgers. Like, we didn't give Drew Brees credit because Aaron Rodgers was, like, the it thing, right? Now, look, in hindsight, Drew Brees was the better quarterback for 10 years. No one knew it but me. Like, me and Mike Guido would argue to the teeth about Drew Brees and Aaron Rodgers, and he always swore to me, Rodgers was better, Rodgers is generational, blah, 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 blah. Now, look, who does he say is the best quarterback in football? Drew Brees. Well, he didn't say it this year. He said it last year. Now he thinks it's Lamar Jackson. But he was wrong no, about he, that, too. No, no, he thinks it's Mahomes. No, he didn't. He said Patrick Mahomes is the, Dude, last is the week, most talented quarterback I've ever seen. Is most, what he talented. Says. most talented. Most talented. That's what he said on his show. <laughs> As of this year, too. Not just last year. This is somebody that's never seen Brett Favre, John Elway, Dan Marino. He refuses to admit how great Tom Brady is. The man still has Peyton Manning as the GOAT. It's, it's, it, it's, first of all, Peyton Manning was never the GOAT. But, you know, well, it, whatever. It's fine. Pat Mahomes is the greatest of all time. That's okay. Okay. <laughs> but, um, yeah, we're actually going to go to break this time. I promise. When we come back, me and Speedy will break down the, the, the divisional, the conference championships who we have in the Super Bowl. Super Bowl. Right? Mm-hmm. Hmm. Do I say see you now, or is that the next segment? Next segment. Okay. We'll be back after these commercial breaks. 
You're, you're, you're listening to the Worldwide Sports Radio Network. And, and, and now the baseball team. Little League. Fantasy League. We are back, back, back with the home stretch on the Worldwide Sports Radio Network. Welcome back into the home stretch here on the Worldwide Sports Radio Network. We are on Facebook, Periscope, Twitter, and YouTube, and live on TuneIn Radio and on our website at WorldWideSportsRadio.com. Speedy Petey here with Tyler Harrison, the final yeah, yeah. 20 or so minutes of the home stretch. Will be our conference championship picks. You said you weren't sure on the AFC, so we'll start with the NFC to give you some time to think about the AFC. Here we go. So the first game, we'll do the NFC first, the Green Bay Packers against the San Francisco 49ers. I think this game is definitely going to be more high scoring. I think the Niners defense did look good against Minnesota last week. Uh, I think the Packers have some other matchup advantages, though they could definitely expose with Rodgers' mobility. I think his, his play extension, I think the coaching really that Matt LaFleur showed in that game against Seattle, the way he moved Devontae Adams around, the way he utilized certain number two receivers at different points in the game, I think will really help. So I think he does play well. The problem is the Niners' run defense is still stout, and I think it'll be hard for Aaron Jones to get going. And that offensive line up the middle is very young against a good power rushing team. So I think that can make a difference too. But what really scares me with the Packers is their defense. I think their their two biggest matchups are the two – uh, two biggest issues matchup wise are the two biggest strengths of the 49ers and I think that's where you're really going to see them make a difference I think Matt Breida is the running back that will dominate for the Niners in this game it was Coleman last week usually it's someone different I think it's Breida this week the, more of the inside runner still fast but more of the inside runner I think George Kittle finally has the big game that we, we've been waiting him to have in the, in the postseason just late in the season receiving I think he finally has that as well. So I think it'll be close throughout, and the Niners, with their running attack, will just tire out the Packers' defense later in the fourth quarter. So the score is going to be of a, a two-score game, but the, the game will be close. I'm going to take San Francisco 34-24, to 49ers. Yeah, we agree, but I disagree that this game is going to be close. I actually think that San Francisco is going to beat them into submission pretty good. Um, again, you, t- you talk about this offense – and Kyle Shanahan being a, the, maybe the best play caller in football. Jimmy Garoppolo really has taken a step this year as to I'm no longer just, you know, this prodigy. I am actually as good as, you know, I was advertised to be. Um, yeah, it, it, that, to me, in the, def- the defense is not even close. That Packer defense has strengths, but the Niners defense as a whole is just dominant. It's... And plus D Ford is healthy and fresh. Quan Alexander is healthy and fresh. The front seven is remarkable. And you want to talk about matchups? Devontae Adams and Richard Sherman might be a 50-50 battle, and Aaron Rodgers doesn't really get much help elsewhere. So, And the running game is not going to be doing it. Aaron Jones is not going to go off in this game. San Francisco is going to win this game pretty easily. I'd say 28-13. 14, they'll get, they'll get it. All righty, AFC Championship game. Oh, here we go. You the go Tennessee first. Titans at the Kansas City Chiefs. Again, when you look at two matchup advantages, I think there's two obvious big ones in this game. For the Chiefs, it's Travis Kelsey. The Titans have had trouble guarding tight ends this year. Their linebackers are smaller. Jayon Brown still on the injury report. I don't know if he'll play or not, but even if he does play, he'll be playing hurt. So... That could make it hard. Rashawn Evans has played very well so far, but again, he's more of a smaller linebacker too, speed type. So that's the obvious one for the Chiefs and for the Titans. That's obviously the guy that's dominated all postseason, the best player in the playoffs so far, and Derek Henry. So I think that's going to be very interesting. So again, what it'll come down to is the other factors: who will win the the passing game of the, the Titans, the run, uh, the pass defense of the Chiefs, and the run run games both ways with the run defense of the Titans, but and Damian Williams. The thing is, I'm going to take the Titans for two reasons. One of which is I think you're going to see, you saw them make a lot of key stops in their game against the Ravens. I think short yardage situations, they were really dominant. And their interior defensive line did a nice job. And that's not normally the strength of their team. they got great linebacker talent, they're outside rushing. But Jarrell Casey and 
Jeffrey Simmons played very well against the Ravens who have a good interior offensive line. The Chiefs' interior line is not great, and that's going to hurt somebody like Damian Williams, who's a lot more of an inside runner, too. So I don't know how, how much of a factor he will be. Their other running backs really haven't been great and trustworthy options. So that's one. And I think number two is I think Mike Vrabel coming from that Patriots coaching tree. What's one thing that they like to do a lot and don't break against top offenses? I think you'll get some, they'll get some big plays here and there, but they're going to make sure that they they buckle down and get key stops. I think they hold them to field goals a lot of the time. But I think Mahomes will have his wow plays. I think he'll play very well. But I think they'll be able to hold them to field goals. The receivers on this team, with the exception of Watkins, are very small. And I think the Frable's going to take advantage of that and make him kind of run it in against that defense or try to throw to those smaller receivers in the red zone. And I think it'll be a little harder. And then, then on their offense, I just – if it comes down to Ryan Tannehill – yeah, he hasn't played well at all, but he's made some nah, good throws. That's not true. Well, he, 160 yards in two games is nothing. It's not good at all. But no, but it's he's made system. he's made some good throws. So I'm not going to say that he's untalented. He's I think he has to trust his receiving depth. Guys like Khalif Raymond and Tajay Sharp have played well. So I think they I trust them a little more than the corner depth of the Chiefs, even though the top two corners have played very well. And that offensive line has played very well against the Ravens who have a potent pass rush. And I just think the time of possession will eventually add up. And again, Andy Reid, conference championship games. He's lost seven of them. I think this one's number eight. I'm taking Tennessee to continue their Cinderella story. 27-23. This is why I'm torn. My gut tells me you're right, and I picked the Titans to beat the Ravens. I want to pick the Titans to beat the Chiefs. But my brain tells me the Chiefs are the obvious pick. And you're right, Andy Reid does struggle in the big game. I'm I'm taking the Chiefs I, uh, by a very, very slim percent. This is the only reason why I say that. There's no team in the league that if down 24 nothing, would go on a 51-7 run. There's not another team in the league that would do that. And I do think the defense for the Chiefs will let Derrick Henry do what Derrick Henry does, and I do think the Titans will control the clock, and I do think the Chiefs are going to have a rough time winning this football game. Everything favors Kansas City. They're at home. That place is a very loud place to play, and you you are very accustomed to this, right? Ryan Tannehill... Hasn't had that coming back down to earth moment yet. Something tells me it happens in this football game. It does. And I don't like Brown on Fuller. I think that's a. I don't like the matchup for the Titans. There's not. Corey Davis might be able to have a big game in that spot. But somebody is going to have. Tajay Sharp, we've mentioned him a lot. I like how he plays. I He's like the guy I think that plays well, though. No. The, outside of Raglan, their linebackers aren't that good, and their corners are all pretty young after that. Right. Unless they use Honey Badger in the slot, and if no. that's the case, that'll free up some stuff downfield. That's fine, and I, I, I do appreciate that because the Honey Badger is uh, probably one that's of the best. cover safety in football. Oh, by far. But I – you're talking about Steve Spagnolo, and he's taking less talented teams' defenses further. I'm not going to sit here and say that this team doesn't have the talent. I'm, plus, the Titans' defense played great against the Ravens because the Ravens couldn't get any muster going, and they were quick in and out drive. Pat Mahomes is going to beat you over the top at some point during that football game. And Tyreek Hill hasn't really had that I'm back game. I think Tyreek Hill has it. I, I think Tyreek Hill is going to be the one that kind of goes. Tyreek Hill is the fastest guy in football. Adoree Jackson is going to keep up with him. He's not far behind. No, 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 no. Uh, no, no, no. I, I, I'm not saying Adoree Jackson's slow. I'm just saying Tyreek Hill can burn him easily. Adoree Jackson's not going to get beat. He's not going to be five yards behind him. He'll be a step or two behind him, but Pat Mahomes only needs that step or two. 
special teams is even, but I'd pick Harrison Bucker over Ryan Suckup. And oh, no, it's not Ryan Suckup. It's Greg Joseph. <laughs> so I'm definitely taking Harrison Bucker. <laughs> but I think Andy Reid gets back to the Super Bowl. I, I He's too good of a coach to only go to one. Um, I do think that this is where the Chiefs do it. Uh, Chiefs, 28 20 Three over the Chiefs, uh, over the Titans. Chiefs beat themselves. So you're one point off from my score in reverse. <laughs> right. Very interesting. All right, so, so you're, you have a 49ers Chiefs Super Bowl. So you have the Joe Montana Bowl. <laughs> right. And I have 49ers and Titans. I guess there's really no theme for that. <laughs> oh, the, the no, no, no. He's still playing. Who? I'm gonna say Delaney Walker revenge game, but he's hurt. <laughs> He's been hurt for the past five I know. years. I know. But I don't I don't see yeah, there's really no correlation with that. I'll figure something out if that's the matchup. No. But you know what you have? Tw- Patriots Falcons twenty eight three all over again. Rabel the Patriot. Shanahan. Rabel is an no, I know, but he's a Patriot. He's a Patriot. Yeah, but he right, in that matchup. I don't know. Uh, it's kind of reaching. I, whatever. I gave you one. You do what you want with it. Holy crap, it's 10 o'clock. We actually we did on. Hey! Snugs alert. Snugs alert. Yes. I think the Chiefs win the game, but as a betting man, the Titans are a great value bet on the money line at 265. Getting more than two and a half to win. Uh, two and a half to one with a running back like Henry is an attractive proposition. You are right, Snug. Hashtag whatever Snug says. <laughs> well, you know what that means. Speed 8. We're in the end game now. Tell them where they can go to sleep. Go to sleep. <laughs> well, I don't know where they'll sleep, but that's up for them to decide. Where you can find us is Facebook, Twitter, Periscope, YouTube, Instagram, Snapchat, iHeartRadio, TuneIn Radio, SoundCloud, Spotify, iTunes, on our website at WorldWideSportsRadio.com. And we are one of only, you can do this, we are one of only 16 There you go. sports radio networks and podcasts on Radio.com. So basically a bunch of social medias that'll keep you awake and not go to sleep. <laughs> I guess there are exceptions to every rule. I'm sorry, what were you saying? I thought the beef was here. Sorry. No, that's Tuesdays. No, wait. He doesn't come on Fridays. <laughs> All right. Um, I hope everybody enjoys their weekend. I hope uh, we all have a wonderful conference championship games that I, I don't know but it will be a very uh, interesting Super Bowl either way if it's Green Bay Chiefs I'm going to be very mad the State Farm Bowl <laughs> no do you got a rematch <laughs> exactly of what, what Super Bowl 2 Super Bowl 1 Super Bowl 1 after the 100 years you can't tell me that's not scripted you can't tell me that uh, all I know is if, it, if it's a Packers Chiefs Super Bowl and the first commercial isn't anything State Farm themed, I'm going to be mad. <laughs> they should just have a giant nightmare montage for that, that agent. <laughs> if that's not the first commercial, if there's something wrong. I feel like the whole thing would be a hoax. You really think so? The Patriots lose at home for the first time in 20 years in the playoff game. The best team in the football gets knocked out at home. The second best team gets knocked out at home. Mm, the third best team gets knocked out at home. Uh, so you can't appreciate what the Titans did. <laughs> no, I picked the Titans to win the football game. I'm not okay. surprised. But no, I'm just saying the Titans also beat the Patriots too. So, <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. But I said the winner of the Patriots game was going to go to the AFC Championship. It's I just thought it would be the Patriots. But even when I'm wrong, I was right, so it's funny. Yes, we got the games in reverse.
course. Anyway. Um, yeah, Speedy, you can say goodbye. Thanks for listening. Have a great weekend. And have a glorious night. If I get no other medal in life, I want a medal for making him do that. At a at such a masculine rate. Is the medal going to be glorious too? Oh, that's you're hysterical. Um, yeah. So we will uh, be eager to see what happens uh, over the weekend. I, I mean, I don't know. I'm very uneven about this Chiefs thing. I have to tell you, it bothers me. You're uneven about the Chiefs. No, I don't feel good about the Chiefs. I don't. The Niners, I'm confident in. I'm not really confident in um, Kansas City, Tennessee. But I'll stick with Chiefs because I they just they turned on such a switch, you know. But um, again, we'll see. Um, as long as San Francisco wins, I'm fine. <laughs> I'm fine. You just want the you just want the Niners in. You don't care about the AFC. <laughs> no, not really. Because if it's Green Bay, Kansas City, Aaron Rodgers is going to win the Super Bowl. I'm going to be mad. <coughs> I'm going to be real mad. That's not guaranteed, though. Nah, Andy and Reid can't come. Kansas City can win. In the big game. Nah. Pat Mahomes wins his second Super Bowl over Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers drops dramatically down the greatest of all time list. Even if he plays well. The Chiefs win 38-35 and mm. Aaron Rodgers goes off. That's going to drop But he him. hasn't played well all season. Okay, I mean, if, he play, if he struggles in the Super Bowl and... He's a reason they lose, sure, but when is that ever the case? When a is, lot. When well, is the he? The, all right. When is he the primary reason they lose? During the postseason. Yeah, specifically which postseasons games? Because uh, the Falcons was a, the whole team stunk. The right. Seahawks, the defense fell apart and they couldn't run the ball, and Mike McCarthy screwed up. Uh, the 49ers, the Giants game. The 49ers, the defense couldn't stop Colin Kaepernick. The Giant game? Yeah, the whole team played bad. Okay. But the whole team playing bad it includes him. Yes, but he was not the – all right. Maybe I worded it wrong. Name an instance where everything else on the Packers played well and he struggled. You can say the same thing about a lot of guys in the league, but the truth of the matter is we're not comparing him anymore to Joe Schmelz. We're comparing him to Brady, Breeze. Um, Elway, Favre, Montana, Unitas, well, he's Young. Gonna, he's going to have to play a lot longer to get to those guys. No, nah, he's done. Because he's, he just started who? later. Rodgers, he started later. so he's already, Yeah, he's done, though. He already is at a disadvantage just in that retrospect, but he's still very good. And well, well, Okay. I guess we'll see what Aaron Rodgers is, right? Yeah, if they're in the Super Bowl. <laughs> they mm. have to get there Mm-mm. first. Mm-hmm. Everybody have a safe weekend. Um, Martin Luther King Day is Monday. For those of you who want information on the holiday, uh, great man, great dream. I, too, have a dream. You have a dream that Aaron Boone gets fired. <laughs> yeah. <well. laughs> Didn't say it could happen. You're, oh, no. This is what it is. You have, you, had a, you have a dream that time travel exists, so you could go back in time to catch the Astros and save Joe Girardi's job. <laughs> Not bad. Not bad. Now, if I had a time machine, I'm going back to 1985. I'm getting a comic book, and I am betting on every single sports game known to me. Oh, so you're going to be... Uh... You're going to be Biff. No, I'm going to be. Oh, yeah, basically. <laughs> Just break out the almanac. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm-hmm. Great Scott. That was heavy. That was really heavy. All right. Well, we're out of here now. Now that we've used Back to the Future references, it's time to go home. The original home, not the, an alternative home. From 1985 oh, that's or disappointing. 2015 or roads, where we're going, we don't need. <laughs> but um, <laughs> yeah, so we're done. It's late. I don't know how I babbled on for ten minutes. It's actually very easy when you're in front of the microphone, believe it or not. But um, I'll just shut up and see everybody on Tuesday. 
Have a great weekend. Uh, is Snugs going to answer me? Probably not. Nope. All right. See ya. You're, you're, you're listening to the Worldwide Sports Radio Network.